We're going to solve a bunch of indefinite integrals that all involve exponential functions and u substitution. All of these integrals we will solve with u substitution, except for this one, which is actually even simpler. This one doesn't even require u substitution. So give these a try yourself before watching the solutions. Of course, we need to recall that the integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus an arbitrary constant. Let's get into it. Our first problem problem is the integral of e to the 5x. Remember that u substitution is used for undoing the chain rule for situations where you've got composite functions. We have a composite function here, we have the exponential function, but inside of it is the linear function 5x. And when you're doing an integral of a composite function, but the inside function is linear, you should get in the habit of not even writing out the u substitution. It's very simple, so it's quicker to do it without writing out the steps. All we have to do is say, well, the integral of e to a thing is just e to the thing, so e to the 5x. Then we just have to take a look at what is in the exponential function. In this case, it's 5x. So if we were to take the derivative of this, this would get multiplied by 5. And we just want to cancel that out. So to correct this, we would just have to multiply by a fifth. And let's add our arbitrary constant. And that's it. Again, when the inside function is linear, you don't really have to write out the u sub because it's so simple. You always just divide by the derivative of the linear function, which is very simple because for a linear function, the derivative is just a constant. Really similar for this next one, e to the three minus two x. This is still a linear function inside the exponential. So the integral is just gonna be e to the three minus two x, but then we we have to think if we took the derivative of this, we'd get a factor of negative two, and we want to cancel that out. So we just have to throw in a factor of negative one half. That's just dividing by negative two and get our arbitrary constant. And that's the second problem. So when it's e to the power of an exponential function, it's super easy. Let's get a little more complicated. Now we want to find the integral of negative 2x cubed times e to the power of negative x to the fourth. At this point, writing out the u substitution becomes a little more reasonable. All we want to do is let u be the inside function here. Let u equal negative x to the fourth. Because if we take the derivative of negative x to the fourth, we'll get negative negative 4x cubed, which is a multiple of this right here, which means it's going to let us cancel the rest of this out and the integral will work out nicely. So again, we'll let u equal negative x to the fourth. That way, du equals negative 4x cubed dx. And then to make this match negative 2x cubed dx, we can just divide both sides of this by 2. And so we have that 1 half du is equal to negative 2 x cubed dx. So we've got negative 2x cubed dx here, and we see that's just half du. And so now we can rewrite our integral in terms of u. This integral is equal to, let's pull out the half, so 1 half times the integral of negative 2x cubed dx is all getting replaced by a half du, and then we have e to the negative x to the 4. Negative x to the 4 is u, so that's just e to the u, and then we can throw in our du. And now it's easy. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u, so we've got 1 half e to the u, but then let's do our back substitution, so replace u with negative x to the 4 to get our final answer. 1 half e to the negative x to the 4 plus c. Here is the next problem. Again, it's just a simple u substitution. Should we let u equal e to the x or e to the x plus 1? Well, it'll be easier if we let u equal e to the x plus 1. Then, instead of having this binomial squared, we'll just have u squared. And the derivative of u will just be ex dx, and that will cancel out with the rest of that stuff. So we'll go ahead and let u equal e to the x plus 1. 
so that du is equal to e to the x dx. So we'll be able to replace e to the x dx with du, and e to the x plus 1 squared will just become u squared. Let's go ahead and rewrite the integral in terms of u. So it becomes the integral of e to the x dx is just du, so I'll put du over here, and then e to the x plus 1 squared is just u squared, so it's the integral of u squared. Now this is simple, just power rule, the integral of u squared is equal to 1 third times u cubed, but let's go ahead and replace u with what we set it equal to, e to the x plus 1. So u cubed is actually e to the x plus 1 cubed, and then we'll just throw in the plus c at the end. And there we go, 1 third e to the x plus 1 cubed plus c. Here is our next problem. We want to integrate this fraction of exponential functions. This is quite easy. All we have to do is split the fraction up. Instead of looking at it as one fraction, let's split it up into three fractions by splitting across the addition in the numerator. Those fractions will simplify and it will become a fairly straightforward integral. Splitting up the fraction brings us here. Now let's simplify them. e to the 2x over e to the x by our exponent laws, since we have the same base here, you just have to subtract the exponents. So this is actually e to the 2x minus x, and e to the 2x minus x is just e to the x. So we'll simplify that to e to the x. Then plus 2 e to the x divided by e to the x, the e to the x's cancel out, and here we will just be left with plus 2. Then we have 1 over e to the x, which is the same thing as e to the negative x. Now it's fairly easy to integrate these three parts and add them together. e to the x integrates to e to the x. 2 becomes 2x because we're integrating with respect to x. And e to the negative x will become minus e to the negative x. Double check that this is true. If you take the derivative of e to the negative x, you just get e to the negative x, but with a negative factor. And so this negative here would cancel that negative factor out, giving us the plus e to the negative x that we had in the integrand. So indeed, this is the correct integral. We'll just throw on that arbitrary constant and move on to the next problem. Now we want to find the integral of e to the 1 over x squared divided by x cubed. So what should u be in this situation? Well, if we let u equal 1 over x squared, that's the same as x to the power of negative 2. So its derivative is going to be negative 2x to the negative 3. Ah, and x to the negative 3, that's an x cubed in the denominator. So those terms are going to match up and we'll be able to clean up this integral. Let's go ahead with that plan. We'll let u equal 1 over x squared, which is the same as x to the negative second. So that gives us du equals negative 2 x to the negative 3 dx. Now, just in case it helps, let's go ahead and rewrite this integral as e to the x to the power of negative 2. And instead of writing it all over x cubed, that's the same thing as multiplying by x to the negative 3. So let's write it that way. So now coming back over to du, you can see that it's pretty close to matching what we have here, x to the negative 3 dx. We just have an extra factor of negative 2 there. So let's divide that out. That's going to give us that negative 1 half du equals x to the negative 3 dx. So now we'll be able to replace this stuff with negative half du, and e to the x to the negative 2 will just be e to the u. All right, for starters, let's pull that negative half out in front of the integral, and then e to the x to the negative 2 becomes e to the u, and x to the negative 3 dx, that's going to be du. Again, du has this negative half in front of it, but we pulled that in front of the integral. And now this is straightforward to calculate. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u, so this is going to become negative half e to the u, but then replace u with x to the negative second. So negative half e to the power of x to the negative second, and of course, plus c. All right, here's the next integral, somewhat complicated looking fraction, but u substitution will take care of this. Should u equal the numerator or the denominator? If we let u equal the numerator, then the derivative of u 
is going to be e to the x plus e to the negative x, which doesn't actually match what we have here because we have 1 over e to the x plus e to the negative x dx. So using u equals a numerator actually will not work. If you tried it, you would see that. Let's go ahead then and let u equal the denominator because if we do that, then the derivative of u will match all of this stuff. And so we'll be able to rewrite the integral in terms of u fairly easily. So let u equal the denominator, e to the x plus e to the negative x. That way the derivative, du, becomes e to the x minus, because of chain rule, minus e to the negative x dx. Now the denominator we can simply replace with u. So it's 1 over u. And the numerator, as well as dx, that is du, exactly. So this is the integral of 1 over u du. Now it's really easy. Let's just move our u substitution out of the way a little to make room. The integral of 1 over u is, of course, just the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we'll throw in our plus c. But u is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x. So let's replace u with that. And in fact, since e to the x plus e to the negative x is always positive, we can also just ditch the absolute value bars. So this will become the natural log of e to the x plus e to the negative x, e to the x plus e to the negative x, and then squeeze in our plus c. Running out of space here, but there we go. That's the answer. And if you didn't understand what I was saying when I explained why letting u equal the numerator wouldn't work, I encourage you to give that a try so you can see exactly what the problem is. But let's move on to the next problem, the integral of e to the negative x times tangent of e to the negative x. Looks kind of gross because it has a trig function, but again, this is a fairly straightforward exercise. If we let u equal e to the negative x, the derivative of u will be negative e to the negative x, which practically matches what we have here in the integrand. So that will work out. We'll let u equal e to the negative x. That way du is negative e to the negative x dx. Now the stuff in our integrand we would like to replace is positive e to the negative x dx. So to match that, we'll just multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. So we find that negative du equals e to the negative x dx. And now we can rewrite the integrand in terms of u. So this equals, let's bring that negative factor out in front of the integral. e to the negative x dx is replaced by du and tangent of e to the negative x becomes tangent of u. So we're just left having to integrate tangent, which is easy if you remember it. If you don't remember what the integral of tangent is, it's actually also solvable via a u substitution after rewriting it as sine over cosine. But assuming you know it, it's just natural log of secant. So remember our negative factor here. And then we have the natural log of the absolute value of secant of u. Secant of u. Of course, u is e to the negative x. So let's just put that in there, e to the negative x. But then, since we have this negative in front of the natural log, that's the same as taking the reciprocal of what's inside the natural log. So we could get rid of this negative and change the secant to a cosine. So let's go ahead and do that, since secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. And there's our answer. Throw on the arbitrary constant, natural log of the absolute value of cosine of e to the negative x plus c. Finally, the last problem looks pretty gross, but is in fact very easy. So this is the integral of e to the power of e to the power of x times e to the x. If we let u equal e to the x in this situation, then this becomes e to the u, and du will just be e to the x dx, which matches this. So this will be very easy. We'll let u equal e to the x, so then du equals e to the x dx, and now we can rewrite our integral in terms of u. This will become the integral of e to the e to the x is just e to the u, because e to the x is u. But then e to the x dx 
that's du. So this is just the integral of e to the u with respect to u. We can proceed and complete this integration. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u. But of course, u is e to the x. So let's replace u with e to the x and or add, excuse me, add our arbitrary constant to complete the answer. And on a second look, this answer should not be too surprising. This is a composite function, e to the power of e to the x. So if we took its derivative, we would get e to the e to the x, which is this part, but then you'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is e to the x, whose derivative gives us that factor of e to the x. Pretty cool. So there we go, a big helping of integrals with u substitution for a bunch of exponential functions. Couple takeaways for u substitution. Remember, if your inside function is just a linear function, you don't really have to worry about writing out the steps for u substitution because it is so simple. And also, remember, you want u to equal something whose derivative will be a multiple of what's left in your integrand. One way you might make a mistake with that is in a problem like this, where if you let u be the numerator, the derivative of u kind of looks like it matches what's left in the integral, but what's left in the integral is actually in the denominator, so it actually wasn't matching the derivative of u as you might think. So with that said, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or any video requests. Thanks for watching.